Morning, y'all. Nice early start. Heading to Miami today. Week in Florida. You coming along? I'm gonna now go and get Coach. Got to pick him up at 3:46. We said a little bit early. Coach is just coming now. What we're gonna do today on our travels is I put a tweet out last week or at the weekend. It's quite early. I kind of forget when I did things. Asking you what golf terms you didn't understand. So I did a video last week talking about angle attack. It wasn't. You know, it's a complicated subject. It's it, there's a lot of angles going on. A few people didn't quite get it. A few people were saying, well, can you do some golf, some of the golf terms you don't you use? We, I don't quite understand. So golf terms from you today. Let's try and simplify it as much as we can. Morning, coach. Morning. <laughs> I'm a little early. Golf term, Mark. Hit me. Head off. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you asking me that? <laughs> You have them too. No, I don't. You so I do. I don't, no. Golf and fishing, your head was clean <laughs> off. <laughs> head off. What? I don't know what it I mean. It just means you've lost your brain, like you can't think straight. You've got the mist of anger. You've lost it. Your head's exploded, so it's off your shoulders. Head off. Def, look at the traffic. Head off. Get out of the way. Head <laughs> off. Ready for a question, Matthew? Yeah, go for it. So, cupped wrists or bowed wrists? Matt is asking. It's a little bouncy in the car. Wondered if it means the inside or the outside of the wrists. So, always go by your lead wrist and the back of it. So, so what does lead? No, so lead wrist. I, I I understand what you're saying there, but I think that adds another term that some people might say. Well, I don't know what lead wrist means. The one at impact that is closest. Leading. Yeah, leading the club in. Yeah. Uh, the handle, sorry. Or leading the hands, isn't so it? So left hander, right, right hander, left. Yeah. So your left hand if you're a right handed golfer. And cut, bowed, done. Extension and flexion will be what you hear as well. Which yeah, way is like which for those, do you know? Technical coaches. Yeah. Extension flexion. Yeah, and I would rather go that way more. The more I think terminology is quite important in coaching to make people all try and put it's hard to get all the coaches to pull the same suit actually because yeah, yeah. some just want to be lazy. And but it's not, it's the lead wrist, I would say, not the underside of the wrist is was, what it's referencing. Yeah, and I would say both, but it depends on what terminology the students using as well. So yeah. that's where it gets a bit messy too, I always think. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Welcome to Miami, Matt. In Miami. <laughs> Question for you, Ray. Hello. Uh, I'm looking very suave well, in the front there. Bit there isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, question for you is asking. This one is from Tony. Yep. Double cross. Don't really understand that one. Okay. So, as a right-handed golfer, let's say sometimes I might aim up the left and try and cut it, or even maybe hit a massive fade if you want. Which is what shape? left to right yeah so I'm obviously aiming at the left trying to make it come back into the middle or to a target on the right maybe and then might catch one out the toe and hit a massive hook so not only have I aimed left but I've made that good intention a really bad one by then shaping it the completely opposite direction so it just goes like see you later golf ball so it's a double left exactly effect, yeah. which is why it's so hated and dangerous yeah why double why cross why do you think cross so double cross where does the cross come now from keep right. I don't I'd probably just uh, I think you I, do I, don't I, know, I could prompt you and I, okay. you'll get it. Yeah. So think of a club path of what number? So let's say straight is what number? Zero. Where, would you be swinging across to your side or out to the other side to hit the pull left going left? Um, <laughs> would it be going left or would it be going left right? Left and the face is left as well. Yeah, so think about it. It's yeah. crossing yeah. that zero line. It's crossing it towards you more yeah. rather than crossing it away from you. Yes. So it's like a pull draw, basically. Goodbye, golf ball. Get one out of the pocket. Do it. Do it again. That's the double cross. <laughs> Made it. Right, Robert and Mark are asking squeeze fade, buttercup fade as opposed to a regular fade. Mark says buttercup, although like you, I'm none the wiser. So squeeze fade, buttercup fade is like gentle fade. So for me, it's when a ball is almost falling out the air to the right. So there's no chance of it going left. 
So I feel I can cancel that side out and the ball's just going to fall out the air and down to the right and hit target or certainly a green complex. Where for me a fade would move maybe 10-15 yards in the air, 5 yards plus. Where a buttercup, little lovely little lemonade as Sully calls them, is like just a gentle little controlled one. So it's, it's a different level of shape, a more precise level of shape. But it's it's not really an official term, that's more just kind of slang. It's something that you you know it's more of like a fun thing to say. Any fade hitting target is just a good shot. Ken asks, please explain compressing the ball against the ground. I hear that on TV a lot. It's one of those TV things that get me quite frustrated, Ken, because all balls basically are launching. You hit them, they go up. You don't squeeze them against the ground. There's no pushing the ball down. The club's got loft on it, the ball's gonna just pop in the air and shoot up. Even the word compression is debatable. It's a term we use because it's just easier for people to kind of get a feel for what it means, but a ball isn't being squeezed against two things. The ball deforms against the face when you hit it, it flattens on the face, it's deforming against the face, is what like scientific studies show, and the scientists say it's deforming, but obviously that doesn't sound as easy to use and maybe even it's confusing but compressing the ball is often a term used for saying it's a good strike but even if you hit down on the ball as long as there is loft on that club that ball is popping up in the air so it's one of those confused you're confused I'm confused as well why they use it the reason they use it is because often they they don't really get it themselves unfortunately Wow, that was maybe the best steak I reckon I've ever eaten. Certainly the biggest. Right, two questions to finish, quick fire. Blur asks, keeping your posture, he says. So what keeping your posture means, if you imagine this is my spine, so here. In fact, if I draw on this lovely pad here. So there's my little stick man golf alert and people feel that they're going to turn around that spine angle. That's keeping your posture. Now the problem you've got with that phrase, it does confuse a few people because you actually in the three dimensional world you don't keep your posture. What you do is you start leaning forwards. So you start swing leaning forwards. When you finish your swing you're actually leaning backwards and you're rotated and you've got what we call side bend in there. So you're actually replacing bends with side bends and turns constantly. It's a balancing act, which is one of the reasons why golf's so difficult, because you're balancing all these angles. But on a 2D screen, if you film it with your phone, if you just record your swing, it'll look like you're turning around this spine angle and maintaining it, where your average amateur golfer, this is a gross generalization, obviously, you know, you get more of these kind of looks going on where they don't look like they're turning around that one angle. So maintaining your spine angle is actually factually incorrect. You don't do that. But it's a term that people use that relates to that good looking feeling like you are turning around this angle. But think about it. When you start your swing, you're leaning forward. When you finish your swing, you're actually leaning backwards. That's not maintaining your spine angle. Last question then, because I've got to go to bed, because I need to wake up at one in the morning, obviously, because of jet lag. Lee asks, with a cheeky little laughing emoji, Spanish hands. <laughs> I love that phrase. I don't know what that means. It's almost as crazy as he's got great touch for a big man. Should we leave it on that one? Let's leave it on that. Put your comments down below. I'm sure there's loads of phrases that we've not included that we could have used. Um, and I'll try and explain more of them. Because not only have we got the fun ones, obviously there's some more serious ones in there as well. Um, the more the terminology is understood by you, the audience, the more all these videos you watch will make sense. And hopefully you'll learn and improve and get out there and enjoy your game more. We're playing the Blue Monster tomorrow. The Row. Poor coach, he ain't gonna have enough golf balls for this place, is he? See you in the morning.